and welcome to this week's review and this week I'm going to be talking about this and the reason I'm going to be talking about this is because this is pretty decent in fact it ain't bad at all the EMN not the EMN but the EMN TR amp is a headphone amplifier and also a DAC and it has a little bit of preamp goodness squeezed into the corner for good measure. It is also priced at £229. First impression? Well, I'm not sure really. The styling of the metallic chassis is rather me too. Very i-fi, if you like. It fails to offer a unique aesthetic character, frankly. That said, it offers a solid build without being outstanding, while the rubber feet under the unit look like they've been bought in a high street craft shop and added during a lunch break as an afterthought. Nevertheless, the feet will help isolation in sonic terms and will also prevent sliding on the hi-fi shelf. And that's my first impressions, which is, well, not amazing, but let's see if it gets any better, shall we? And let's see if it gets any better in a closer look. And welcome to the closer look for the AMN TR amp, headphone amplifier, DAC and preamp. When you take this thing out of its box, the contents, well, apart from the unit itself, are fairly minimal with a brief but effective instruction sheet and a single USB-C cable offering 400 milliwatts of power into 16 ohms or 350 milliwatts into 32 ohms the texas instruments amplifier chip runs in current feedback a b mode to well hopefully provide a low noise performance and that's aided by a selection of tantalum capacitors the tr amp uses an es9038 q2m saber dac which runs up to 32 bit 384 kilohertz in pcm mode or dsd128 in native mode plus mqa native hardware rendering it does not offer user definable filter settings or as i prefer to call them tone controls and i applaud that they're not there it pleases me no end i find these filters more trouble than they're worth all of that action needs a decent battery in this case it's a 3700 ma battery that you can use for up to 10 hours the front of the chassis offers a large silver metal knob that doubles as a power switch. To the left of that are two headphone sockets, 3.5mm and 6.35mm. This is a welcome feature and one that deserves special note. I really don't know why this feature isn't standard on all portable headphone amplifiers. Firstly, well, there's the sheer convenience, isn't there? If you're using a pair of headphones of one size, you don't always have a converter available to move to another socket size. They're not always readily available. Secondly, using a converter is not good for sound quality, as I found during a series of A-B tests. You add a converter to the end of your headphone cable, and you're also asking the sound signal to jump yet another fence before it gets to your ears. To the immediate right of the three and a half millimeter socket is a small LED. This thing shines white when on and then cycles with a smile on its face through various colors, depending upon the type of digital file being played. Green for PCM, magenta for MQA and cyan for DSD. It'll flash blue when charging. And just to let you know, the TR amp can play music and charge at the same time and when the amplifier's battery dips below 20 percent the led will flash red around the rear are two usb-c sockets the socket on the far left well that handles the charging to the right of that is another usb-c socket which acts as an input for a laptop a phone tablet and the like. So why do we only get one USB-C cable then? The included cheap as chips cable must have cost 
all of a fraction of a penny to include. So why the micro penny pinching then? If you do buy a second cable, keep the freebie as a charging unit and buy yourself a third party audiophile cable to enhance the sound. To the right of that lot is a toggle switch to move the unit from DAC mode to preamp mode and back again. And to the right of that is a pair of RCA outputs to connect to your main amplifier, spanning just 129 millimeters by 66 by 30 millimeters and weighing in at ooh, all of 240 grams, the chassis arrives in a metallic red color. So there are the specs, but really, what does this thing actually sound like? Well, let's get to the sound quality tests and we'll find out. And welcome back to the sound quality tests for the AMN TR amp. And I grabbed myself a pair of Sennheiser 660S headphones to begin the sound quality tests, which the TR amp ran very easily, by the way, and played a CD rip of Grand Nationals, Drink to Move On and Talk Amongst Yourselves from the album Kicking the National Habit at 16-bit 44.1 kilohertz. This indie pop track suffers from excessive peak limiting, so has an edge to those upper mids. I wanted to see how the headphone amp coped with the aggressive mastering. Well, there was an edgy element to the mid-range. You're not gonna get away from that. That's the actual nature of the music, I'm afraid. But there was a nice tonal balance to the TR amp, which lowered listening fatigue and made this album, well, listenable. The extra information brought about by this tonal balance also added a welcome layering of the information. There seemed to be more going on the presentation was busy and involving. And that opinion really carried on when I played a little bit of Bob Marley's jamming at 24-bit 96 kilohertz. Bass thoroughly underpinned this track, but it never dragged. The focused nature of the lower frequencies prevented blooming or any sense of lower frequency dragging. On the contrary, this song moved along at a jaunty pace, while both the lead vocal and backing harmonies sounded smooth and full of emotion, while retaining a welcome isolation from the backing instruments. So I took the Sennheiser's 6.3 5mm plug out of the TR amp, and I put a 3.5mm plug connected to a pair of Meze 12 earphones back in. And I played a bit of jazz. Actually, it was Sonny Rollins and it was called St. Thomas. Now, when I played this, what I did miss was a, a lowering of the gain. I wanted a, a gain switch to step down the gain to give me a little bit more leeway on the volume because playing with earphones, you don't really need an awful lot of volume. But because I've only got one gain setting, the volume switch I had really stepped up the volume a little bit too much. It was fine, it was perfectly usable and there were no real issues, but I just wanted a bit more freedom. I just wanted a bit more volume span. I wanted a bit more distance between the very lows and the very highs. And I didn't really have that with this particular volume switch because I just had a single gain setting. Like I say, it wasn't a major problem. It wasn't a big issue, just a slight irritation. It would have been nice, put it that way. In terms of basic music, well, the treble performance was notable by its fragility, but also its confidence. There was nothing wishy-washy about the cymbal taps on this track. The same could be said about the normally shy piano, which here took a full part in the mix. So again, all very nice. But look, if you're presented with a good quality source, if you've got a really nice piece of music, very high quality, in this case, 24-bit, it's not gonna to be too difficult to translate that into something rather nice and listenable. What if I played a lossy file from a phone? Not the best hardware or software source, but I connected this via a cable and I had a little listen. In this case, it was Marvin Gaye's Mercy, Mercy Me. And back 
in went the Sennheiser 660S's to have a little listen. And actually I was most impressed with the low noise performance from the TR amp. This element of the sound revealed itself in seemingly minor elements of the mix. That is little secondary percussion strikes that lurked in the rear of the mix, but added a more significant reverb tail that showed how much more air and space now resided in the soundstage. Bass was also impressive in terms of its organic qualities, but most of all, its definition. It was more present, more tonally balanced, but the sense of realism was high here. The sense of focus and precision was also a notable facet of the TR amp's performance, as was a sense of separation of the lead vocal from the supporting instrumentation. Next I wanted just to test the DAC bit in this box and rather than doing, I don't know, rather than doing the easy thing and just comparing the TR amp with another head amp type of product, I thought I'd give the TR amp a bigger challenge. So I went and compared it to a specialist DAC, in this case the topping D50S, and you can see a review of the D50S in that link up yonder. And I wanted a USB head-to-head -head here. The D50S offers a good general USB sonic response for a portable DAC. Okay, it's not quite as refined as a specialist USB DAC, the sort you might get from iFi, the Zen DAC, but in its category, as an integrated product, the D50S remains a reliable and good quality sonic performer, and I thought it would be a good comparison with the TR amp. I wanted to see how far away, or otherwise, the TR amp was to that standard. So I connected my TR amp to my laptop, and on the other end, I trailed a pair of QED RCA cables and connected those to a pair of powered speakers, in this case a pair of Kanto YU4 speakers. And I played all of this in a near field mode. Now near field is a general term meaning, well literally, the speakers are quite close to you. It's a sort of typical computer setup where you'd have your computer and your speakers and you're pretty near to everything. So in that mode Sound can be a little bit different from a normal hi-fi setup where you've got that bit of a distance between you and the speakers. So I played a bit of jazz again, the Sonny Rollins piece at 24-bit 96 kilohertz. And he played sax and he was surrounded by piano and upright bass and drums. The sonic response was quite surprising. Surprisingly good, that is. I found the overall presentation offered an impressive maturity for such a small, low-cost unit. A level of maturity that was, well, missing from the D50S, weirdly enough. This maturity included a tonal realism around the percussion that added a sense of power and weight. The drums had a sense of serious purpose about them here. They sounded like the drummer was concentrating on his work. There was almost a sense of furrowed brow feeling about the drummer in this particular sequence, as if he was really concentrating on what he was doing. And in addition to that, there was also a nice sense of tonal variation in the actual drum kit. So when he was hitting different drums, you could really hear little individual personality traits of each individual drum hit. And that tonal variation just added a sense of maturity to the sound. The Rollins sax had an almost rich mellow flavour, and I think that's because of the TR amp's tonal balance again. Bass played a larger part in the mix from the TR amp, and you could certainly hear more from the upright bass, which acted as a source of confirmation. The upright bass string plucks offered a satisfying bulk and heft that gave the overall track a much needed foundation. So for the price then, the DAC, the built-in DAC, especially one that's integrated, and by that I mean it sits next to other features, the DAC itself performed surprisingly well. 
That impression was confirmed when I played a 16-bit 44kHz rip of the album Stoosh from Skunk and Nancy. Bass guitar threatened and resonated and sounded like a pacing caged tiger. Percussion was taut and tight, yet delicate elements like acoustic guitar strums could still be heard easily within the mix. More to the point, the TR amp allowed this track to translate the energy and fire from the lead vocal, which spit and spat and pushed its elbows into your ribs. Listening to this track through the TR amp, I got the message from the album. Any piece of hi-fi that can translate emotion like this is always on the right track. So how do I conclude the review of the EMN TR amp? Well, the TR amp doesn't look particularly exciting, but it sounds particularly exciting. It offers a quality, mature sound output. The headphone amplifier section offers a low noise, detailed and balanced sound output. And the DAC is certainly not a make weight. It compares and contrasts very well, even with standalone DACs in the same price area. Offering great sound and greater value, and the price had dropped to £229 just before I started this review, the EMN TR amp is a little corker. And we're done. Thank you very much for staying to the end of this video. I appreciate your support. And on that note, if I could ask you just to click on the like and also subscribe buttons, I'd much appreciate that, please. Check out the description, which has a host of links to my website, which has lots of extra editorial you won't find on this channel. Also, I have a Facebook group, which is, oh, I think it's hit 10,000 members now. So you're welcome to join that if you'd like to pop over. Lots of help to be given if you need any. I have a Patreon page, which has a host of exclusive material, including exclusive videos and all kinds of other stuff. So check that out there. I'll be back next week with a, you'll be surprised to hear, another video. And I hope to see you then. Until that time, guys. Bye-bye for now.